Holy shit, Joe Big Donnie got indicted? Oh my god, Barack, that's cray cray in a bad way right there. You don't have any clue what indictment means, do you, Joe? I'll be honest, Barry, I've got no fucking clue what you're talking about. How the hell are you the president, my guy? Oh, whatever. I guess we'll have to find someone else to help us rank all the Dragon Ball sagas. Holy shit, Barry, it feels like my birthday right now. I can't believe we are ranking the Dragon Ball sagas. Maybe I'll have an opportunity to show off my Biden blast. Yeah, maybe, Joe, but we still need to find... Oh, my God, that Joe, Mr. Rogan is at Trump's trial. He just sent me a video. I'm putting it in the Discord. Check it out. Oh, my God, is that Ben with him? Is Ben his lawyer? <laughs> I guess so. This should be funny. Let's watch. Donald based Naruto Trump, the charges have been read out to you. How do you plead? Your Honor, my client would like to plead oopsie-daisy. Ben, what the fuck are you doing? This is not a joke, Mr. Shapiro. Your client has 34 charges. Now I ask again, how do you plead? Your Honor, with all due respect, he wasn't even there. On God, my client pleads whoopsie-doodle. Mr. Shapiro, I have half a mind to hold you in contempt. Your Honor, my client was listening to Freebird the entire time of the alleged crimes. Surely this would bring the charges down to a second-degree cringe take and nothing more. Oh my God, this moron is going to get me thrown in jail. Wow, that was pretty funny, LOL. Why would he get that airhead Shapiro as his lawyer? Beats me honestly. You're better off just representing yourself at that point. You just can't keep a good Trump down. What's up, bros? Your boy just got a retrial. Ben literally made the judge lady have a brain aneurysm, and now the trial has been delayed till next week. We are so fucking back. Holy fuck, Donald. That means you'll be able to rank the Dragon Ball sagas with us? Glad to have you back, buddy. It's good to be back, and it's even good to hear your sleepy voice, Joey. I hope you're doing well, too, Barry. As a celebration, I'd like to rank the Dragon Ball sagas with my homeboys. Of course, Donnie, we would have missed your takes. You always have the best or worst opinions, it's never in between. And that kind of energy is exactly what we need on this channel. Although I will be honest, I did invite someone to come to join us because I genuinely thought your ass was cooked. Fair enough, Barry. I thought my ass was going to be roasted as well, so I understand who's joining us. Hey guys, the one who knocks is in the building. Walter White, that's who you chose, Barry? Whoa, Donald. What's with the attitude? Dragon Ball is literally my favorite anime. I know a lot about it. We'll see about that, Baldy. Anyway, what criteria are we working with, Obunga? I don't care for that nickname, but anyway, we are ranking the sagas on how good we think it was. Simple criteria, just ranking our enjoyment and how good we think the writing and characters are. Sound good to everyone? Sounds super mega awesome sauce to me, Barry. Let's get crunk and do this tier list. God, you're so fucking cringe, Joe. You really are. Cringe? Do you know what's really cringe, Donald? Wearing a jumpsuit that matches your Oompa Loompa tan? God damn, Mr. President, relax before you're indicted for manslaughter, LOL. As usual, I will get the ball rolling so this doesn't turn into a dick measuring contest. The saga to start it all of the Emperor Pilaf saga of the original Dragon Ball. I gotta give that shit an A tier at the very least. It introduced Bulma, the lovable genius with a tendency to do things that I'm not gonna talk about for fear of being arrested. It introduced the absolute gem that is Son Goku, as well as fun characters like Yamcha, Master Roshi, Oolong, Ox King, Chi Chi Puar. I mean, just so many people were introduced. And while their influence on the story would wean later on, their time in the original Dragon Ball was well spent. I give my vote to A tier. Perfect take, Barry. I admit that when you take the entire series into account, the original Dragon Ball simply hasn't aged as well. But the fact that this one saga introduced so many fan favorites, it has to go into A tier. Master Roshi is so funny, and Goku's tenacity to get all the Dragon Balls while showing off his superhuman abilities is just fantastic. I agree with A-Tier. Of course, your favorite character is Master Roshi. I wonder if it has anything to do with how perverted you two are. Yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan of having a 16-year-old Bulma flash a 300-year-old man. That was pretty cringe. But I supposed it was simply a different time, and that kind of comedy was acceptable. I would never let Walt Jr. watch the Pilaf saga be tier. Walt, I don't know why, but you're pissing me off. I'm inviting Rogan. Donald, I swear to God, if you don't know me and what I am capable of, then my suggestion to you would be to tread lightly. What the fuck, Donald? Walter is a known meth cook. You really want to piss him off? That little cuck was about to make a case for the Pilaf saga not being an A-tier. Fuck that guy. Rogan is better anyway. Holy fuck, guys, we are ranking Dragon Ball sagas. We are so fucking back. You're goddamn right, Mr. Rogan. We are so fucking back. Would you like to rank the tournament saga? 
Mr. President, I would fucking love to do the tournament saga. What a saga it was. Introducing the tournament concept into Dragon Ball. So many wacky and fun characters were introduced. Like my main guy Krillin, Goku's best friend. That little Buddhist monk is a riot. Not to mention Master Roshi dressing up as Jackie Chun in order to beat Goku and instill into him the idea that there's always someone stronger than you. And that you always need to work hard. On top of all of that, when Goku turned into the Great Ape, we see the absolute brutality of Master Roshi. The guy blew up the fucking moon. That's so based S-tier saga. Couldn't have said it better myself, Joe. S-tier for sure. What a saga, comedy, action, and a droplet of wisdom just to tie it all together. This is Toriyama at his best. Easy S-tier, so much hype for this saga. And it introduced Krillin, my fourth favorite character. I miss the original Dragon Ball. Don't get me wrong, every Dragon Ball show has its moments, but the original just has this nostalgic magic to it, except for maybe the next saga, the Red Ribbon Army saga. It wasn't bad, but it was just kind of there. Goku destroying robots and villains was pretty awesome, but I don't know, it didn't have that same energy as the others. I think we can throw all of them collectively into B tier. I can agree with putting the General Blue and Commander Red saga into B tier, but I think the actual start of the Red Ribbon Army should be A tier. It introduced Mercenary Tao, who was a great antagonist until Piccolo appeared. I think we got to give the guy who killed a man with his tongue some credit. I agree with that sentiment. Mercenary Tao was pretty cool, and his defeat at the hands of Goku was baller. Imagine getting a grenade kicked at you by a little midget. How hilarious. Totally agree, Barry. Watching that bitch get wrecked by Goku was hilarious, Jamie. You know what to do. Roll that motherfucking clip. All right, fellas, I humbly concede to put the first part into A tier and the rest into B tier. Wait, actually, this tier list is kind of redundant, isn't it? Why is it separated like this can't we just talk about the entire arc as a whole? That sounds like too much work, so let's just keep it the way it is and let the good folks at home correct us in the comments. All right, Sleepy Joe, but if we get roasted, it's all on you. The Dragon Ball community takes no prisoners. They will execute us with their keyboards. Oh, Barry, Barry, can I do the fortune teller Baba saga? Sure thing, Mr. Rogan. Go ahead. Your energy is always appreciated. Thanks, Barack. The tournament was awesome, and Goku finally getting to see his grandpa again was heartwarming as fuck. I mean, it was so sad that he accidentally killed his own father figure, but seeing those two reunited was just so good. I mean, his pure emotion, his crying, his longing for his grandpa, it was so goddamn wholesome. It just reminded the audience that while Goku is this superhuman fighter, he's just a little kid. So wholesome, my God, it's got to go in S tier. Mr. Rogan, I agree that the moment was very wholesome and very heartwarming. But if I'm being honest, everything else in that arc didn't really do it for me. I think C tier for this saga, and it only gets C tier for the heartwarming finish. What did we say earlier, Barack? Trump either has good takes or absolute dog shit ones, and in this case, you're completely full of shit. Donald, this saga is A tier at the very least. Shut up, creepy Joe. I bet you only like this saga because Bulma flashes the audience for like the fourth time in this show, you perverted zombie. Here we go. One day they'll stop arguing. Sad Obama noises. Fuck off, Donald. We all like it because it's heartwarming and funny. It's not my fault your entire family is so fucked that seeing another family reunited doesn't do it for you. My family is fucked? How's your crackhead son doing, Joey? He's just fine, Donald. How's that daughter of yours you're trying to plow? Gentlemen, for fuck's sake, have some decorum. Obama angry, Obama smash. Fellas, I think we are all a bit heated. And this video will now have to be split into two parts because of all this fighting. Let's just put the saga into A tier, do the Piccolo stuff, and knock out the original Dragon Ball. And then we can do Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super in the next episode. How about that? What about Dragon Ball GT other, Joe? Trust me, Mr. President, I think we'll blow through the GT sagas. All but one were pretty trash. Let's be honest here. Fine, that works, I guess. Still fuck you, Donald. I kind of hope your arrest goes through. Oh, trust me, Guilty Joe. If they get me, they're coming for you next. Just you wait, cunt. Moving swiftly along, I'm putting the fortune teller saga into A tier, along with the introduction of Tian Shin Han. I mean, Tian is a lot of people's favorite character because of how good a rival he was with Goku. He's pretty cool being the last of an extinct race of cyclops like humanoids, and I always thought his little mime friend was pretty funny. A tier for him and the fortune teller saga. Is that okay? Totally fine with me, Barry. Go for it. Sounds good, Barry. I think the fortune teller saga is S tier. But judging by the heat of this Discord call, let's just put it into A tier and save some headaches. 
Now that that's over with, I think we can put the Tien Saga in A tier as well. Love the introduction to Tien. What a character. It's a damn shame they buried him in subsequent shows. He gets entire arcs where he's actually involved and does stuff in the original Dragon Ball. But other than the Seiyun Saga and that one moment against Cell, he gets buried completely. Oh, well, at least we still have the old Dragon Ball. What a tournament, A tier. Triclops is my homie for real, for real, and the overall tournament had some great matchups. Yamcha versus Tien, Krillin versus Goku, Goku versus Tien. Great stuff to watch. I agree with A tier. Great arc, I agree, and Goku losing a second time was a bit of a surprise as he had already lost before, so the audience kind of expects Goku to win this time for sure, only to be fooled like the absolute silly little dummies that we all are. Toriyama cranked out so much gold with the original Dragon Ball A tier. You're right, Mr. President, and the gold continues into the King Piccolo saga. I mean, this has to be S tier. This was the turning point for Dragon Ball. I mean, finally, a villain that actually wins something, and wins in a big way. The King Piccolo saga also really started popping off with the characters. Krillin died. Master Roshi died. Chiaotsu died. We gotta see Yajirobe cut someone to pieces. And of course, that climatic fucking finish. Jamie, pull up that fucking clip, you wonderful son of a bitch. God, such a hardcore finish. Goku was all like, fuck your entire fucking life, green scum, and just ripped straight through him. Plus, it had a wonderful ending with Piccolo, as we know him today, being born S-tier for sure. I'm sorry, fellas, but I'm about to start controversy. I think the King Piccolo saga is B-tier at best. Take the nostalgia goggles off for a second and recognize that the beginning of this saga is absolute garbage. God, I hope they put you in the slammer for a long time, Donald. What a cringe take. Shut it, you Cybermen look-alike. Is no one going to question why the Pilaf gang just knows about Piccolo? Why do they just tell him everything they know for whatever reason? Or the whole divine water bullshit being pulled out again? I think King Piccolo was a great villain. And the saga overall was great, but there's some glaring flaws you fellas are ignoring. Yeah, I suppose you have a point with the Pilaf gang stuff. I honestly don't remember how they got there and why. Well, Donnie, I suppose taking all opinions into account, we can put the King Piccolo saga into A tier, but if we get roasted in the comments, it's on you. Yeah, it'll be your fault, Donnie. Just like Goku goes Super Saiyan, you go Super Retard. Oh, please, the dementia patient doesn't get to call anyone retarded. So go back to jerking off to inappropriate Bulma moments, you dirty old pervert. Hey, fellas, I gotta go. Jamie just found my long-lost stash of Planet Namek Indica. And if I remember correctly, smoking all seven Dragon Blunt summons Kushron, so I need to go. But I just want my vote for the Piccolo Jr. Saga to be S-tier. It introduces the second-best character in all of Dragon Ball, my main boy Piccolo. What an absolute legend. Oh, shit, Jamie, wait for me. Don't smoke that without me. Just put it into S-tier Barack. I'm getting a call from Ben. He says it's a legal matter, and he's technically still my lawyer, so I gotta go. Just you wait when we get to Dragon Ball Z, Sleepy Joe. I'm gonna bend your opinions over my $320,000 bed and have my way with them, you greasy little worm. Fuck you, Big D is out of here. I seriously doubt that's gonna happen, but what do I know? I'm no legal expert. How about you do the outro, Joe? You got this. Just take it slow and thank the audience. Don't stumble your words and you'll be fine. Obama, out. Holy Dragon Balls, I never get to do the outro. Well, thank you for watching part one. I'm sure we will be hard at work working on part two in the near future, so look out for that. I honestly believe that koalas are, in fact, capable of driving cars. And that's just poggers, if I'm being honest. Let me just... Wait, what am I talking about? Eggs and bacon, dragons. Oh, gosh, I think Biden Joe having stroke, so poggers. I'm pog and dragons, and... And... Where am I? What's up, homies? Oh, shit, you're all already here. Very nice. Hey, Barack, what's up? I was just telling Alpha Joe and Sleepy Joe about my wild night last night. Yeah, finish the story, Donnie. What did you say after she said, what's a Dragon Ball? Oh, right, so she asked what it was, and I said, a Dragon Ball is me dragging these balls across your face. Ha, 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 ha. Damn, I sat through a 20-minute story just to hear you make a stupid-ass pun. Lame as fuck, Donald. Fuck off, Sleepyhead. I am a comedy genius. I had the whole club jumping with that joke. Jumping off of buildings due to how cringe you are, maybe. I don't know the whole story, and honestly, I don't want to. It's time to continue on with ranking Dragon Ball, fellas, and we just got to the most hyped section. This one is going to be a doozy. 
You got that right. Barry, Dragon Ball Z, and GT are probably the most talked about shows in the Dragon Ball universe, both for very different reasons. One is a mostly loved and beloved series, while the other one is a great case for showing that there is no God. I think you're being way too harsh on GT. The Super Saiyan 4 transformations are dope as fuck. Oh, wow. The show has a new transformation. It must be good. You sound like a fucking toddler Joe. You're lucky the Superior show is up first. But I gotta say, I really don't like this format of splitting the entire saga into multiple sections. It seems odd to me to just separate the Raditz saga from the Vegeta saga, since they both should be judged together under one umbrella. Pick a better tier list next time, Barack. This was the best one I could find, Mr. I Can't Tweet, so shut it and find it yourself next time. Or better yet, maybe one of you two slackers can actually edit one of the videos for once instead of nagging me harder than Michelle does. I came here to rank Dragon Ball sagas and kick ass, and I'm all out of ass. Wow, love the energy, Barack. I came here to rank Dragon Ball sagas and snort copious amounts of protein powder. And let's just say, I'm all out of protein powder. You probably shouldn't snort protein powder, Mr. Rogan, but I don't really go and get swole like you youngin', so what do I know? Oh, actually, I do know something. I know that the Raditz saga is A-tier. The introduction into space is wonderful. I think it was an awesome idea from Toriyama. It makes sense that Goku is an alien. I mean, we watched a whole show where this literal child can turn into a massive monkey. Sounds pretty alien in nature to me. We are introduced to Gohan for the very first time, and he looks so adorable in his little outfit. I mean, come on, look at him. The hairs on my neck always begin to stand up when I hear you calling kids adorable Creepy Joe. You inadvertently trigger my fight-or-flight response. Fight or flight these almost 400-year-old balls, you orange twat. Homies, please, namaste, relax, and take deep breaths. We'll get through this with the power of love and friendship. I think I have nothing more than a bottomless pit of loathing for that fucking zombie. And what the fuck do you mean almost 400 years old? Seriously, Joe, before we continue fucking explain yourself, how old are you? Yeah, Joe, I don't understand. Surely you can't be that old. I must admit, I too am curious. All right, boyos, if you must know, I was born in the year 1680 to a wonderful mother and father. Both were hardworking folks just trying to survive. My father found out that our neighbor was a witch. I mean, she just had to be. What woman knows how to read? It was clearly witchcraft, and as she stood burning at the stake, she cursed me with immortality under the condition that I chant a holy ritual known by many around the world. That sounds like some complete goosebumps level of bullshit, Joe. Yeah, I gotta agree with Mr. Trump on this one. What ritual nonsense are you reciting, Joe? Oh gosh, fellas, I don't want to scare you. It might be best to just move back to ranking Dragon Ball sagas. Very unfortunate things happen to those that hear the ritual of Element 115. Joe, I know curiosity killed the silly little cat, but we can't continue until we hear it. I mean, I'm just so goddamn curious they should call me Barack the Cat Obama. Very well, Barry, but don't say I didn't warn you. Quit stalling, Sleepy Joe. I'm beginning to lose interest. Jamie, what the fuck was in that spliff? I think it's best we simply never speak of this. Joe, your fucking eyes rolled into the back of your head. What the fuck was that? Sorry, Barry, I kind of blacked out for a second. What were we doing? Oh, look, Dragon Ball. Put the Vegeta saga into S tier. What a saga. I mean, the introduction to the remaining Seiyuns, as well as the absolutely iconic match between Vegeta and Goku is just perfect. God, it was so sad watching Nappa just kill all the Z fighters one by one. What a tragedy. I agree with the devil in disguise, fellas. The Vegeta saga has to be S tier. I mean, it literally introduced some of the best moments of the entire series and showed the Dragon Ball audience that everything is different now. No longer are we all about tournaments and adventure, but saving the planet and universe from planet buster level threats. And this saga had some of the best character development. Take, for example, Piccolo, a guy who started off as a villain, trained the son of his sworn enemy, and even made the ultimate sacrifice in an attempt to protect him. Him, Jamie rolled the clip of the slug man's final words to the toddler. Piccolo? It's okay, kid. You're like the son I never had. I'm proud of you. Goodbye, my friend. What an absolute stud S tier for this saga. It was fantastic. I agree with S tier. Goku's arrival from King Kai's planet was awesome. 
and watching him use the iconic Kaioken against Nappa and Vegeta was dope as fuck. Times two, times three. Try sucking down this big old times four Vegeta, you little short fuckhead S tier. Here comes more gold, gentlemen. The absolute perfection of the entire Namek saga. The whole thing was just perfect. Toriyama really nailed it with this one, with all but Gohan and Krillin dead. The two rascals set off with Bulma in search of the Namek Dragon Balls in order to revive the Z-Pimps, only to arrive on a planet being invaded by Space Hitler himself. The iconic Frieza, what a villain, maybe the greatest villain in all of Dragon Ball. And you gotta give props to his fantastic business dealings. I mean, the guy literally sells planets. What a business, he's just like me for real. You would relate to Frieza, you fucking clown. But I do agree with S tier. I mean, it's got everything, drama, action, comedy, sadness. And of course, the introduction to a transformation that would change Dragon Ball forever. Goku achieving the form of Super Saiyun. Besides your cringe pronunciation of the greatest anime transformation ever, I agree with S tier. What a brilliant saga. Gosh, it was so sad having to watch my main nigga Krilling pop like a weasel and die again. But it led to the ultimate golden-haired warrior. My only nitpick was that Goku tried to let Frieza live. I mean, for fuck's sake, Goku, you ain't no Batman, my nigga. Just roast that rat's bitch ass. I guess it's just in his character not to kill, but still, this is literally Space Hitler we are talking about. Gosh, that transformation by Goku was so fucking metal. Just watching Goku get angry in a way we haven't quite seen before was so metal. I don't know if you guys ever played Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1, but this cutscene still gives me goosebumps. Jamie Roll, the wonderfully outdated graphics of that wonderful game. He's taken innocent lives again and again. And my best friend, Krillin. It's over, Freedom! That shit gives me more chills than a chalky chocolate chip ice cream brilliant saga. I could talk about the Frieza saga all day long, but alas, we must move on. Stay still, my soft beating heart, anyway. The next saga, according to this tier list, is the Garlic Jr. saga. And my god, fellas, that was some bite fetish bullshit. I pray I never have to watch anything having to do with Garlic Jr. ever again. I don't know who the fuck thought this was good F-tier nonsense. Yeah, that really was a crock of shit, Donald. I gotta agree with you there. I don't even know if the shit is canon to the story or not. But regardless, it was dumb if someone out there has Garlic Jr. as their favorite character. Feel free to post your address in the comments and the Secret Service will pay you a visit F tier. Other than seeing Kami and Mr. Popo trapped in a bottle, which was admittedly hilarious just cause like this little midget put God in a bottle, LOL. This saga has nothing going for it, F tier. That was easy. Now let's get to the real meat and potatoes of this show, the Android Saga, my personal favorite saga. And not just because they introduced my waifu Android 18, but because everything in this saga was amazing from start to finish. You got Trunks, the crotch spawn of Bulma and Vegeta taking out Frieza with literal ease. We just spent like a dozen episodes watching Goku and Frieza duke it out for the fate of the universe. And this fucking badass tween just comes in and cuts that bitch into a million pieces. What a based character. Then you got the fake out villains of a future whose timeline seems to not be going the way Trunks initially predicted. Watching Vegeta absolutely beat the ever-living stuffing out of Android 19 will never not be funny. Ah, oh, yes, the most overrated saga in all of Dragon Ball, the Cell Saga. Typical of you, Barack, you fucking normie. This saga was trash. It belongs in C-tier. Trump, that is the most out-of-pocket shit I think I've ever heard. Trump, if I ever see you in public, I'm taking out two straps and we are walking ten paces. We will duel to the death, you fucking mango look-alike. Bite me shoulder, Sniffer. You're all fucking normies. I admit the Cell Games portion belongs in S tier, but everything else was time travel nonsense. I fucking hate time travel. It is the biggest writing crutch in all of writing. It's true, very true. I only speak the truth. The real reason this whole saga is trash is that Toriyama didn't even want to make it. He definitely planned to end Dragon Ball with the Frieza saga, but of course money talks and she is quite the seductive mistress. I should know, of course, I'm filthy rich anyway. The saga is dumb. The editors didn't like Toriyama's villains, so he just had to keep writing them. Cell is the only good thing to come out of this saga that wasn't Rule 34 Android 18, C-tier, in my opinion. Trump, I can understand maybe putting the Trunk Saga portion of the Android arc into B-tier, because it was quite the shock having to just accept the fact that time travel is a thing, but everything else belongs in S-tier. It was fucking great. We had some of the best moments in the entirety of the series. I mean, how can you not like it? The fights and setup were phenomenal. Android 18 versus Vegeta. Goku's heart virus. Piccolo fusing with Kame. 
Cell's introduction as the hands down the creepiest villain in all of Dragon Ball, the bug man fucking drinks people, Donald. He absorbs 17 and then gets his ass whooped by Vegeta only for his dumb ass to fuck it all up with his pride, which is very much in character for him, not to mention the two best fights of Goku vs. Cell, and the subsequent Gohan vs. Cell fights are the two best fights in the entire series. Such a good arc. It all has to go in S tier. I just can't agree with you here, Donald. No one here does. Mr. Rogan Gohan transforming into Super Saiyan 2 was fucking dope, and the death of Android 16 was heartbreaking. You're just a little bitch, Donald, on God. This has to be your worst take ever. Just a common Donald Trump L. I'm literally mailing you a photocopy of the letter L so you can never forget this moment. The only L being handed out will be to your entire family once you're finally put in a nursing home, you b b bumbling, s stuttering bastard. F f fuck you, Donald. It doesn't change the fact that the Cell Saga is S tier. We are only putting the Trunk Saga into B tier because you're a giant bitch. Gentlemen, Michelle has a bomb-ass casserole waiting for me, so let's continue on. Please measure Cox later, you dumbasses. I think the Otherworld saga is C-tier PyCon. Never really did it for me, and it was cool to see Goku in Otherworld, but we just got through with the Cell games, and now it's another tournament. Not my favorite. It was just average for me, C-tier. Yeah, I agree with C-tier. I don't really care about this saga. The fight between Goku and PyCon was cool, but that's about it. I don't even know who you guys are talking about, so I'll just agree with C-tier. It's not like you know anything sleepyhead, so no shock to me that you forgot PyCon. You'd do well not to be forgetful either, Donnie. I'm sure you have a bunch of court dates you're going to have to keep track of. Barack, if it's all right with you and the boys, can I talk about the Majin Buu stuff? I'm a big fan of that bubblegum-looking motherfucker. Go right on ahead, Mr. Rogan. As for you two, take some notes. Mr. Rogan is always polite and on task. I swear you two are like little kids screaming in a sandbox. I don't want to hear it from you, Barack. At least Creepy Joe only sniffs children. You straight up destroy them with high-range, unmanned explosive vehicles. Shut it, you fat prick. I wonder why you classified all your drone strike documents. I wonder how many decades need to pass for us to find out how much damage you fucking did. Gosh, now I'm acting like them. I'm sorry, Mr. Rogan. Please go on about Ma Jin Boo. Thanks, Barry. So, I think we can all agree the Gohan portion of the Boo saga is pretty lame. His superhero cosplay shit was kind of cringe. It certainly had some funny moments, but not enough for me to really re-watch this portion of the show. I skip it entirely. I'm putting it into D-tier. I can agree with that. Look how they massacred my boy. What a tragic waste of a character, poor Gohan. Yeah, the great Saiya men didn't really do it for me. D-tier is fine. It's a new shift for sure, but I don't think it was the right one. Awesome. Now moving on. I think the World Tournament Saga is B-tier, and the Majin Buu Saga is A-tier. The arrival of the Supreme Kai was pretty cool, but he kind of loses that mystery upon revealing his plan. Plus, the way the tournament ended was kind of meh for me. But assuming Goku vs. Vegeta is considered the Majin Buu Saga, I mean, come on, it's the rematch of the century, fellas. Seeing Vegeta contort back into his evil ways thanks to Bob Body Magic was heartbreaking especially when you take Bulma into account. I mean, she was so sad, and seeing Bulma sad makes me sad. I'm sniffling a bit now. Gosh, so sad. But then you get the amazing redemption of Majin Vegeta facing off against that fat boo. For the first time in his life, Vegeta fights to defend the Earth and his family. It has to be the most touching moment in all of Dragon Ball Z. Pull up that clip, Jamie, and get me some tissues. Trunks, Bulma, I do this for you. And yes, even for you, Kakarot. And so, one of the Earth's greatest warriors has vanished in a blinding flash of light, having made the ultimate sacrifice for the sake of his loved ones. His name was Vegeta, a proud Saiyan prince. Oh God, the Biden tears are flowing. Oh fuck, so sad. Sleep soundly, my sweet prince. May a flight of Shenrons lay thee to thy rest. You can't watch that moment as a Dragon Ball fan and not remember where you were the first time you saw it. There I was atop the Trump Tower, watching Vegeta make the ultimate sacrifice for the Earth, compounded and made even worse by the fact that his brave act failed. He was redeemed in the hearts of many, but his sacrifice was in vain. How tragic. Obama sad, Obama sad, Obama cry, sad Obama noises. 
Exactly, Barry. I feel your pain. Moving on from that, we have the Fusion Saga, which is a mixed bag for me. I'm thinking B tier Super Boo was awesome, and his powers were like cells. But on steroids, he could just take anyone he wanted and absorb them, stealing their powers and drip. He is quite literally the drip thief. And I can't think of a more dastardly villain than a drip thief. Yet at the same time, I thought Gotenks was fucking dumb. I mean, Goku showed us Super Saiyan 3, which was awesome. But now those two munchkins just fuse and bam, they have the same form. I mean, that's kind of lame. But then we go back to absolute gold watching Gohan enter the fray. I mean, the guy is dressed like Goku in his ultimate form and drops the hardest line in all of Dragon Ball. Roll that tape, Jamie, while I roll this blunt. <laughs> so, hotshot, you want to fight Majin Buu? Fight you? No, I want to kill you. Damn, that line does go hard as fuck, though. For real, for real. Gohan is a straight fucking thug with that line. It's too bad he gets absorbed. It's too bad he gets absorbed, Barack. But I mean, it did give us Buhan, the strongest Majin we've ever seen. And yes, he is stronger than Kid Buu. So don't go throwing a fit in the comments. He may be stronger, but he doesn't have that same evil streak. Kid Buu is the original form of Buu. And the first thing that little midget does when he wakes up is blow up the earth. I mean, that's cold as fuck, homie. He just instantly, without hesitation, just beats his chest like a stunted gorilla and blows that shit to smithereens metal as fuck. I'd give the Kid Buu part an A tier. I can agree with A tier. The final spirit bomb happened thanks to the assistance of Mr. Satan, which is absolutely poggers. Mr. Satan is a real one. He saw the good in Boo and almost turned the fat Boo into a good guy. But just his presence was enough to throw Kid Boo off and have him spit out Fat Boo. Don't get me wrong, I'm not sure how that really makes any sense, considering the implications. But it was pretty wholesome nonetheless. I vote A tier. Kid Boo was fucking stupid. He had no personality whatsoever. He was literally just a pink monkey. That shit was dumb as fuck, C tier. Well, yeah, Donald, he was a literal kid. And he was pure evil. All he's going to do is destroy what personality do you want him to have? Oh, I don't know, Joe, how about any fucking personality at all, besides yours, of course. Fat Boo had the candy thing going on, and he was goofy and lovable, kind of like when you see a fat cat. Super Boo was a rage demon that gained personality the more he absorbed people. Kid Boo just pounded his chest like a goddamn monkey and went, woo, oh, woo, oh, ha, ha, woo, oh, woo. What kind of dumb shit is that? I guess you have a point, but the spirit bomb finish was still pretty baller, so the lowest I am willing to go is B tier. B tier is fair, and I'll just go ahead and throw the ending into B tier as well. Oob is just Boo reincarnated. And the ending to our beloved Dragon Ball Z, while not perfect, was definitely satisfactory. I concur with Barry. B-tier is fair for both. Donald, would you like to do the honors of speedrunning GT for us? It would be my great pleasure to shit all over GT. Let me get this out of the way first. Super Saiyan 4 was cool, as was the fusion into Gogeta, now that that's out of the way. The Black Star Dragon Ball saga was a cool concept, executed in the same way Joe runs the country. Terribly, it gets D tier. The Baby Saga was dope, but finished in a bit of an awkward way. C tier, the Super 17 Saga is literally the most garbage piece of Dragon Ball content ever conceived F tier. And finally, the Shadow Dragon Saga, while filled to the brim with plot contrivances, was at least a very satisfying ending C tier. Fuck GT Tho on God Toriyama was smoking more crack than Hunter when he made this shit. Eat the fattest dick you can find, Donald. GT was a great show, and you're just a salty prick. I'm out of here. I ain't listening to any more of this nonsense. I let you speed run it because I thought you were smart enough to see the beauty of GT. I will never make that mistake again. Fuck you, Donald. Well, shit, now that Joe left, I guess we will have to make a part three for Dragon Ball Super. God damn it. I just got more work to do now. Oh, well, this was fun, fellas, but my dinner is getting cold, and I agree, Donald. GT is dog water. Obama out. GT is dog shit. And hopefully, Sleepyhead comes to his senses. There really is next to nothing in terms of redeeming quality. Oh, well, those two are gone now. So do you have any thoughts on GT, Alpha Joe? Not in the slightest, I'm sorry, but GT is just dog shit, LOL, anywho. I'm going to go now, Donald. We summoned Kushron and wished to know the location of the seven super blunts said to summon the Namek dragon, Kushunga. I got my Kush radar, and I'm ready to go hunting. Wait, fuck, Jamie, wait for me. Looks like another outro for Big Donnie. And I have some updates for all of our lovely subscribers. Just a bit of a heads up for everyone, I suppose. The next video will be part three of this series, finishing up the Dragon Ball sagas by ranking Dragon Ball Super. Or should I say, 
Dragon Ball Pooper. Ha ha ha, I'm so fucking funny. Anyway, after part three will be the video everyone has been waiting for. Sleepy Joe versus Donald based Naruto Trump in Ninja Storm 4. Look out for that shit, homies. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks again for subscribing and have a wonderful day. It's that time again, fellas. We made it all the way to Dragon Ball Super. Who would have thought? Not me, Barry. I thought I'd be put in jail by now. These goddamn New Yorkers want my ass so bad you'd think I was a fresh slice of pizza. Mamma mia, mamma mia, give me the fresh slice of pizza, please. I am just a poor old man needed the pizza. Give me the pizza. Joe, what the hell are you going on about, my guy? Can't you tell Barack? This man a clearly needed the pizza. Someone get a demand some a pizza, please. Don't you fucking start now. You could use less pizza, Donald. My precious Bambino Jill just have provided me with the pizza Mia more. I love it, a pizza munch, 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 chew, swallow. Oh, wow, boys, that feels so much better. I caught the pizza fever, and I'm doing great now. How are all of you doing? Good. I, I guess I'm not even going to try and understand what just happened. Where is Mr. Rogan? He said he would get on after he finished interviewing Kushran. Kushran? What in the actual Looney Tunes fuck are you talking about? I thought that was just Rogan tripping on DMT. You mean to tell me Kushran is real? Not only is he real, but he's also being interviewed by Joe Rogan. Take a look, I just clipped part of the interview. It's in the Discord. Thanks for granting me my wish of getting to interview you, Kushran. I appreciate you. It's not a problem, Mr. Rogan. It's been over 400 years since someone smoked the seven dragon blunts and summoned me. It's good to be asked something that isn't akin to unlimited Kush. What would you like to know? Well, I guess I'd like to start with your relationship with Shenron. Is he like your brother? Or is he related at all? He's just my annoying cousin. Always getting all the screen time. Somehow I'm just not good enough, I guess. He's always been such a diva, complaining about being summoned by those Z fighters all the time. But I mean, come on. They can fly and shit. It's like no shit they'll find the Dragon Balls all the time. Well, have you ever tried talking to him about it? I try to give him advice, but he just always says the same thing. And I quote, you're just a dumb dragon whose powers can only be used to summon blunts. Like somehow I'm less important, and that shit hurts, homie. Especially coming from a family member. Damn homie that must sting. On God, family can be some of the most annoying people in our lives, but they're still family at the end of the day. I'm sorry you gotta deal with all that, but if it makes you feel any better, I smoked all seven dragon blunts because I wanted to get to know the real Kushran. And you seem pretty cool, homie. You're always welcome on the show. Thanks, Joe. It's nice to hear someone talk to me like I'm a normal dragon. Your show is fantastic. My time is up, so I'll head on out. But I'll leave you a dragon blunt on the house just for you, homie. Holy shit, that blunt is hella loud. Thanks, Kushran. Any time, Mr. Rogan. It is time for me to slumber and await the next brave warrior. Farewell. Well, I'll be damned, fellas. Kushran is fucking real. I mean, I guess he is. Wow. What an amazing time to be alive. Holy shit, fellas. You would not believe who I got on my podcast. Sorry, Alpha Joe, but I already told them. Aw, oh, Donald, you dick. Oh, well, at least we get to rank the Dragon Ball Super Sagas together. The excitement continues. Exactly, Joe, and as an apology for Donald spoiling your surprise, would you like to start us off? I'd love to, Barry. So the reintroduction into Dragon Ball was handled pretty well in the movie version of the God of Destruction saga, but the anime itself was pretty lackluster. And not just from an animation standpoint, everyone already knows how dog shit the initial animations for Dragon Ball Super were, so I won't harp on that too much, nor will I blame the animators themselves. I blame the company. They gave those poor bastards so little time in comparison to standard anime, which was so lame anyway. Going off the movie version, I would give this saga a C tier. It introduced Beerus and Wiss, which was pretty dope, as well as the hip new form, Super Saiyan God. But the anime version, at least, was so bogged down by nonsense that by the time it actually got to the fight, I was pretty worn out with the whole thing, C-tier for me. I suppose C-tier is fair, and I am a bit biased as I am a Dragon Ball Super fanboy. But yeah, the anime took too long to get to all the high points, but you all gotta admit that my Bulma scene where Beerus slapped Bulma, causing Vegeta to rage and attack that purple cat was pretty awesome, even if it did lead to nothing. Plus, isn't it so funny that the god of destruction, the entity tasked with destroying entire planets and galaxies, is a fucking cat. So adorable, so funny, I vote B tier. I agree, Joe, it was pretty funny, and I overall was fine with the retcon that Vegeta knew about Beerus. 
And obviously, the god of destruction is going to be stronger than Ma Jin Bu. But it was such a shame to see him just get no diff by Beerus. Now that I think about it, they waste Ma Jin Bu throughout the entire series. But I guess the movie version is good enough to ignore the shitty anime. I will have to agree with Mr. Rogan. I think it's C tier. Dragon Ball Super is nothing more than one giant fan fiction. It was all trash, and you all are delusional. All Super has going for it are the fight scenes. And the fight scenes in this saga were stinkier than Sleepy Joe's diapers. D tier for this pile of crap. Fuck off. Donald Super is an amazing show that gives us a new canonic timeline. First you insult GT, and now Super, you are scum, my friend. Cry about it, fanboy. I admit Super is better than GT, but that's not exactly an accomplishment. The best thing to come out of Dragon Ball Super is how smoking hot they made Bulma. What a milf. Everything else is trash. This is going to be painful the whole way through, I can already tell. I'm throwing it into C tier. I believe that's fair now. Let's move on to the Golden Frieza saga. While I think Frieza's new form is drippy as all hell, like shit, give me a suit made of those colors, I do think it was pretty silly. All they do is shit on Gohan and the rest of the Z fighters and then suck off Goku by having him take the kill off of Vegeta. I mean, come on, can't my boy Vegeta just finally kill Frieza? I agree, Barack. What the fuck is up with them always shafting Gohan and Vegeta? I also think it's just kind of bullshit. I mean, I know Whis is an angel, so he'll no doubt have powers we don't know about, but how convenient is it that he can just turn back time? Lowell Frieza literally won that fight. Don't get me wrong, it was a total bitch win, but it still was a win. And then Whis is just like, nope. And then Goku steals the kill. D tier for me. I'll admit as much as I love Super, if you're going to bring back an iconic villain like Space Hitler, you should at least do something good with him, D tier. Look at what they did to my boy, oh god damn it, why, sweet merciful god, why, why would they do this? I know Donald, I feel that pain, but hey, at least they do more with Frieza later. Dragon Ball Super had a terrible start, let's be honest, but it got better. Well, I suppose if by getting better you mean it went from liquid shit to solid shit, I suppose it did get better, Alpha Joe. There he goes, spouting nonsense, negative Donnie going at it again. Don't you dare call me that ever again, Sleepy Joe, I will find you, and I will slap you silly. It's not really hard to find me, dumbass. Here's my address, Donnie, the fucking White House. You guys are like fucking clockwork. I'm moving on. The Universe 6 tournament was a good return to form for the series, and I think it was solid. It did some setup for the Universal tournament, and we got to see some iconic moments. I know it's anime only, but seeing Super Saiyan Blue mixed with Kaioken was beautifully crafted. Hit was a great foe, and his time skip assassin gimmick was pretty cool. I'd say B tier. Dog shit D tier. For what, Donald? Did it not have enough genocidal war villains for you to adore? I mean, you got to see Frost. He's the same species as your favorite character, Hitler in space. Gosh, now that I say that out loud, that sounds like a terrible stage play, but I digress. It was the first solid saga that gave fans some hope for the series after the rocky start. I think B tier is fair. It was solid and had some good flashy moments and set up. I mean, come on, Donald isn't red like your favorite color. Jamie, roll the clip of badass Goku. The Kaioken! Fine, put it in B tier, but only because red is the best color, the greatest color. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it's the most amazing color of all time. I mean, a reason is a reason, I guess. Now, I'm not going to lie, this copy of Vegeta bullshit is like D tier, I'm like 99% sure. Someone in the boardroom blurted out slime Vegeta at a meeting once as a joke, and someone heard it and accidentally made it into a whole arc. Seemed pretty pointless to me. Yeah, it was weird the whole time, like they had Vegeta sucking on a pacifier for like reasons, I guess, he was vanishing or something. I honestly couldn't tell you. They killed Gotenks' credibility back during the Boo saga, so I had no reason to really give a shit about these two. I guess it's nice to see them attempting to do something with them. IDK, it's just weird, D-tier. Oh, come on, fellas, seeing Vegeta like that was pretty funny. No, it really wasn't Sleepyhead, it really wasn't. This shit is F-tier, D-tier is being really generous. This was essentially just filler. Fuck you, Donnie, you're the filler here, filled with sugar, hamburger meat, and french fries. Piss off bumbling, stumbling, fumbling little Joey. I'm the greatest American who ever lived. Of course, I'm filled with hamburger meat. Oof, the best American to ever live? I mean, what about George Washington? Fine, I'm the second best American to ever live, so get wrecked, Sleepy Joe. Well, hang on, Donald. What about Robin Williams and Bob Ross or Harriet Tubman or Al Pacino or George Lopez or Chris Rock or Abe Lincoln or... 
six hours later. Or Rosa Parks, or either of the Roosevelts, or Eleanor Roosevelt, or Frederick Douglass, or Einstein, or JFK, or Benjamin Franklin, or James Madison, or Thomas Jefferson, or Hamilton, or the guy who played Hamilton in the stage play Hamilton, or every person who worked on the stage play Hamilton, or any of the hardworking extras that helped set design and create Hamilton. I really like the Hamilton play. It's pretty good, Hamilton. Got to get your right-hand man back and all that. Jesus Christ, Alpha Joe, you just listed off like 7,000 names. Goddamn well still fine. I'm in the top 10,000 of Americans. The point is I beat Sleepy Joe. Ha 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 ha. Fuck you, Sleepy Joe. God, you're pretentious. I'm moving on. The Future Trunk saga has the best start to a saga in a long time, I'd argue, since Cell and Dragon Ball Z. Finally, we get to see evil Goku, and Trunks returns from the future for the first time in like forever. It was super dope seeing Goku black. And Zamasu, seeing how a Supreme Kai is trained, was great lore building. We got to see Beerus use the Hakai. It was solid as fuck, A tier. I can't help but notice you said nothing about the absolute horse fuckery that occurred in that completely asinine ending. I'll admit this is probably the best saga in Dragon Ball Super, but they fumbled the bag to that ending harder than Atlanta fumbled the Super Bowl in 2016. The whole fucking point of the saga was to save Trunks' future, and it just ends up being deleted by that fucking pillhead-looking Zeno. Only Mai and Trunks survived. That's got to be some sort of existential nightmare, just watching everything you've ever known just being deleted like that. That was so stupid, it drops it down to C-tier. Yeah, Joe, I really liked the saga, but man, did they drop the ball at the end? Seeing Vegito again was pretty baller, though, so I won't knock it to C-tier, but I think B-tier is pretty fair. I agree with former President Big Barry Obama. I think the arc was awesome all the way up until the ending. I mean, what were they thinking? First, they give Trunks a ridiculous power up and then fused Zamasu just turns into the sky. I mean, what the fuck? How does that even work? And then just pop everything gone. You're sorry, Trunks. I know you were working so hard to like save this universe, but it's just gone now. Kind of dog shit. Not going to lie. But considering 80% of the saga was good, I will give a B tier. I see your reasoning, fellas. B tier is fair, but fuck you, Donald. Always trying to put shit down a tier, have a goddamn soul. Super isn't as bad as you think it is. You're right, Joe Super isn't as bad as I think it is. It's actually much worse. Case in point, the fucking tournament of power, or as I like to call it, the tournament of nonsense. Fuck this entire tournament. It was all flash and no substance. Ultra Instinct was dope as fuck. And the music gave me a massive Trump-sized boner but everything else was pretty trash. Jiren is hands down the most boring fucking villain in Dragon Ball. Can someone please tell Toriyama that stoic doesn't always equal badass? That alien fan drawing just stands there for half the fucking tournament, and by the time he finally gets involved, I just don't find myself giving a modicum of a shit anymore, D-tier. Negative Donnie is back at it again with so much cap you could fill up a kiosk at the mall. The tournament of power was awesome and the highest stakes we've ever seen in Dragon Ball, for fuck's sake. Donnie, entire universes were erased in that tournament, and so many interesting moments and fights occurred, not to mention the super awesome transformations and callbacks. You had Ultra Instinct, Vegeta's Blue Evolution, Topo's God of Destruction form, Frieza was brought back, and he was fantastically evil. We got to see Kefla born from Patara Fusion, Master Roshi turning back the clock to shit on some fools, so many good moments S-tier for me. Oh, for real, Joey, S-tier on God, you're fucking senile. Alpha Joe, Barry, talk some sense into the president of the nursing home. I'm going to be straight up honest. I don't think the tournament of power is S-tier, but I do think it was pretty awesome. At the end of the day, despite our love for anime storytelling, Dragon Ball isn't exactly some deep philosophical tale. It's a story that revolves around aliens beating the shit out of each other and looking like absolute studs while it happens. Goku breaking through the barrier of Ultra Instinct is an iconic moment, and that music track made me orgasm the first time I heard it. No cap, I had to change my pants. And when I put on my second pair, I watched Goku hit Kefla with that Kamehameha wave straight to the face, and I fucking nutted again. Jamie, roll that clip. I need to get a new pair of shorts. Mine have become sticky.
God, Kefla ate that shit so hard, like right to the dome, she just took a fat L, rest in peace. There is no recovering from that. And I do think at the end of the day, enjoyment is what matters most in something like the Tournament of Power, and that shit was enjoyable as hell. Like Mr. Rogan, I don't think it is an S-tier saga, as there is some moments of bullshit, for example. I love Roshi as much as the next guy, but how in the actual fuck is he keeping up with Jiren? Goku had to get a new form that terrified literal gods just to smack Jiren around, but Roshi was just doing his thing, which is admittedly pretty gangster, but it doesn't make sense all in all. I'm leaning on A-tier. Well said, Barry. I think A-tier is fair. I think A-tier is fair, fellas. I wish I could convince you of the gloriousness that is the Tournament of Power, but A-tier is completely fair and understandable. Thank you for giving Super the credit it deserves. You buffoons are going to look back years from now and regret your batshit terrible placement of the Tournament of Power. But alas, ignorance is bliss. At least we get to talk about some actual good content. The Broly movie. What a fucking movie. That shit was hype from start to finish. The last thing I remember from the Broly character was that dog shit bio Broly movie, and that shit literally made me bleed from my nose in disgust. But I gotta give credit where credit is due. The movie redeemed Broly and set up a fantastic story. Plus, that green alien chick can get this Schmeet Monday through Sunday S-tier movie. I agree with Donald S-tier for sure, and not to be vulgar, but I'm pretty confident it would require at least three separate SWAT teams to get me away from Chile. You're definitely walking the line with that statement, Mr. Rogan, but I agree, despite being there just for fan service, I mean, hell, the whole fucking movie was fan service, let's be honest. She was a pretty cool character, and her wish saved Broly from being absolutely decimated by Gogeta, so she's actually important, I give S-tier. I agree, Barry S. Tier. What a great film. And Frieza was absolutely hilarious in that movie. Hey, Joe, can you ask Jamie to pull up that clip of Frieza killing Paragus? I know he kills someone, but you can't help but laugh at that shit. It's pretty funny. You heard the president, Jamie. Give me a solid roll on that clip, homie. Just more reasons to add to the list of why Frieza is the best character in Dragon Ball. Speaking of which, the Galactic Patrol saga, I must admit I'm not too fond of reading, but it was solid. B tier for me. I think the little angel guy should have stayed dead, though. Bring back actual stakes in Dragon Ball. I know wish orbs exist, but for fuck's sake, I thought an actual sacrifice occurred. But no, he was brought back as a mortal. Like, okay, I guess? Whatever. I guess angels and gods exist, so at this point, who gives a shit B-tier? Color me surprised that you would put Dragon Ball super content from a manga into anything as high as B-tier Donnie. I knew you'd come around. I mean, fuck Joe, it took them long enough to finally make half-decent content. When the first six sagas of your show are straight-up poo-poo, it's about fucking time an arc is half-decent. Moro was pretty cool, and seeing magic reintroduced into Dragon Ball was also pretty sweet, with how astronomically powerful our heroes have now become. Magic is a great way to even the playing field, because it's hard to fight magic. If anyone complains, it's like, what the fuck do you mean, bro? It's magic. I agree with B-tier. I also agree with B-tier, and I think we can also throw the granola stuff into B-tier as well. I think it had its flaws. The whole two Dragon Ball thing was kind of weird, but I guess it's possible. And I think Granola was a pretty cool villain. He had the motivation to attack Goku and Vegeta. But I think the bumfuck group of nobodies were lame. Gaz was lame as fuck. But the graphics of him growing old and decrepit as he fought was pretty cool visually. I agree, Barry. The visuals were pretty gnarly. It literally looked like Joe himself was out there throwing hands with Goku and Vegeta. Like, look at a picture of Joe and a picture of Gaz when he's all bones and shit. They look alike. Ha 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 ha. Shut it, you fucking gremlin. Insulting me is a mistake. Kind of like making an undisclosed payment of $130,000 and writing it off as a business expense. It's about that same level of a mistake. Fellas, we have arrived at the finish line. Take a deep breath and relax. If you have your dragon blunts now is the time to take a big puff. The superhero movie was baller as fuck. Like, holy shit, I was so scared when they announced it was going to be all CGI, but man, did they prove my ass wrong. That shit was awesome, S-tier. Easy S-tier, Barack. They finally gave Gohan and Piccolo the spotlight again, buffing both of them to absolute monsters. If I had to nitpick, I wish Cell Max wasn't a rampaging kaiju, but that's really just nitpicking. It was dope as fuck. Orange Piccolo is poggers, and Gohan Beast can stab you with his razor-sharp hair. I mean, come on, if you're standing behind Gohan when he transforms, you're losing an eye. S-tier any day of the week. 
I agree, Mr. President. And though they weren't around for long, those two hero androids were solid. The whole story was goofy as fuck. But in a good way, I like the setup. And it makes sense that the Red Ribbon Army is still crawling around like a cockroach. Great film, and an amazing ending, not to mention that Bulma scene. I mean, guys, her ass was just on full display for a solid 10 seconds. A wooga wooga, my monkey brain likey. I don't know what it is with these new Dragon Ball movies, but they certainly have much more magic and thought put into them. And seeing my waifu Milf Bulma shake her ass for me was fantastic. I specifically called Toriyama and told him to include a scene where Bulma makes that shit clap for a real player. And my main boy Toriyama delivered S tier for sure. Well, fellas, this has been amazing. And despite some of your dog shit takes, I'm really happy to have done this tier list with all of you. I gotta go now, though. I've got 14 missed calls from my lawyers. I'll talk to you guys later. I gotta go too, fellas. I got Jill this Chile cosplay, and let's just say Dark Brandon is about to come out. Till next time, you beautiful bastards. Mr. Rogan, thank you as always for being a wonderful guest. Would you like to do the outro for us? For real, Barry? No fooling? I can do an outro? Go right ahead, Mr. Rogan. Obama is out of here till we meet again. This is truly an honor. Thank you guys so much for watching our videos and subscribing to our channel.